for the special intentions of the victims of the recent calamities, the Bohol earthquake and the ty and Typhoon Yolanda. There will be a second collection for the affected families in the Visayas region through Caritas Manila. Let us all welcome our priest presider, Father Jason Laguerta, from the Holy Cross Parish of Makati, as we join the choir in singing the entrance hymn. and sisters in the Visayas for all those who are hungry and suffering greatly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We call to mind our sins. We humbly beg the Lord to grant us pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God, to me and my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, every virgin, all the angels and saints, and the name of my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who did not create death and who provide food for all living things, drive out in your compassion the hunger of your servants, that our hearts may serve you with greater readiness and joy. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Um, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. Hear, O kings, and understand. Learn, you magistrates of the earth's expanse. Hearken, you who are in power over the multitude, and lord it over the throngs of peoples. Because authority was given you by the Lord, and sovereignty by the Most High, who shall probe your works and scrutinize your counsels. Because, though you were ministers of his kingdom, you judged not rightly, and did not keep the law, nor walk according to the will of God. Terribly and swiftly shall he come against you, because judgment is turned for the exalted. For the lowly may be pardoned out of mercy, but the mighty shall be mightily put to the test. For the Lord of all shows nor partiality, nor does he fear greatness, because he himself made the great as well as the small, and he provides for all alike. But for those in power, a rigorous scrutiny impends, 
To you, therefore, O princes, are my words addressed, that you may learn wisdom and that you may not sin. For those who keep the holy precepts, hallowed shall be found holy, and those learned in them will have ready a response. Desire, therefore, my words. Long for them, and you shall be instructed. The word of the Lord. Rise up, O God, bring judgment to the earth. Rise up, O God, bring judgment to the earth. Defend the lowly and the fatherless. Render justice to the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the lowly and the poor. From the hand of the wicked, deliver them. Rise up, O God, bring judgment. I said, You are gods, all of you sons of the Most High. Yet like men you shall die and fall like any prince. Bring judgment to the earth. Let us all rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but his foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, Father. Sorry, but it's not good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Father Jason and in this Mass, we all pray together and uh, I think it is the least that we can do for our brothers and sisters who have been devastated by the recent calamity. Maybe later on you can give your donations or whatever help you can share, but I think that this is the best that we can give to them, our prayers. And our Gospel today from the 17th chapter of St. Luke is in one way or another not helping us in our reflection, in our prayer, because our gospel talks about gratitude, it talks about the leper who came back to thank Jesus for what he has done to him. So in a way, how can we be grateful at this time of our life, at this moment in our history? Is there anything that we should be thankful for? Are we thankful that we have been spared from the calamity? But by being thankful because we have been spared, in a way we are insulting those who have been devastated and destroyed by it. And if you ask those who survive, they also feel guilty about it. If you may have heard some of the, the interviews, those who survived, many of them did not want to live at all because they feel guilty about being alive and the rest of their family are dead. So how can they be grateful that they are alive? Because there is some guilt in their mind, in their heart. So our gospel today 
it seems, is not helping us in our desire to be one with our brothers and sisters who are suffering at this very moment. Those who have no food to eat, yung mga wala pang natatala sa kanila, na any form of help. So, how do we understand the message of the message of gratitude in the context of our uh, of our country today? That is, if we don't understand what gratitude is about, then we will never see the connection between gratitude and adversity. There is a connection between being thankful and in facing all the difficulties of our lives. So it's not about being thankful that we have been spared or that we that we did not suffer. It's really about acknowledging that in truth and with all humility there is nothing that we can boast of. So gratitude is really more about humility. It is the acceptance that we are all helpless. That we can never really save and uh, perhaps we can never really do much for others. It is first of all the acknowledgement of our own helplessness. That is what gratitude is about. It is to realize that we are helpless in the face of nature and the wrath of nature we are helpless no matter how complicated our devices are or how advanced we are in technology we are as helpless as the rest of humanity and by acknowledging our helplessness then we know what power we have that we cannot do it alone that we cannot uh, that we cannot help uh, those who are in need alone that we need to bond together, that we need to help each other, that we need to rely on each other. So you uh, gratitude leads us to humility, to acknowledge that we need a bigger force, a stronger force than what we normally have. And that is by looking at life from the bigger perspective, then we become grateful, knowing that I am as helpless as the rest if we are alone, then we need to see that we need to, first of all, form bonds of community so that we can help each other. And secondly, we need to acknowledge that there is a bigger force than us that can help us. Our gospel today at the end of it tells us, stand up and go, your faith has saved you. So in the end, gratitude leads to that, leads to faith. So gratitude leads to humility, to acknowledge our helplessness. But gratitude also leads to faith and hope that there is some force, some power that is higher than any one of us combined and that is the only one that we can rely on. Your faith has saved you, Jesus said to the blind man who has been healed. And I think all of us, to the, to the, back, to the back, to the leper who has been healed. So this is the same message for all of us. Two things. Acknowledge our helplessness and the challenge to, to work together and, the, and to acknowledge that there is a power greater than us that we need to rely on. And this is, I believe, what we can hold on in this prayer of ours today. Lord, we are helpless. In, in everything that happens, we are helpless. So we need to stick it out with each other. We need to help each other. And more, we need to have faith in you because you're the only one who can truly save us, who can truly help us. So brothers and sisters, let us pray together in this Mass and let us be grateful. Gratitude by being humble and gratitude by having faith in our heart. Gratitude can be seen, last point that I wish to share with you, gratitude can be seen in Job's life. If you recall the story of Job in the Old Testament, he had everything good, a good family. He had um, he had many he had many cattle, and uh, his resources were plenty. He had a nice house. He had a very nice life, and all of a sudden, everything was gone. Everything was taken away from him, just like that. And Job said, "The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ultimately, that is what gratitude is about. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Still, praise the name of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We pray together in this Mass. Let us be thankful to God. Not to gloat over our, our life that is better than the others. But let us be grateful because ultimately we have a God who can re whom we can rely on and who can truly save us. We pray for those who are, who are suffering now. We entrust their life to God and the souls of the departed to the mercy of God. Amen. We now stand and present to the Lord our petitions as we say, In gratitude we call on you, Lord. In gratitude we call on you, Lord. that the church on earth may continue to heal broken lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. In your eyes should we call on you, Lord. That we may praise and thank God for the gifts of life, faith, health, happiness, and the warmth of family, friends, and community. Let us pray to the Lord. In your eyes should we call on you, Lord. That we may always give thanks in every aspect of our lives for the love that God lavished on us, by adopting us as his children, let us pray to the Lord. In gratitude we call on you, Lord. That the sick and those who find life burdensome may see God's special love and care through the concern of their families. Let us pray to the Lord. In gratitude we call on you, Lord. That those who have died may join the saints in the worship in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. In gratitude we call on you, Lord. For our fellow Filipinos and Messiahs and Mindanao regions, who are suffering due to the recent earthquake, typhoon, and hostilities. Grant them, O Lord, comfort and healing in these trying times, and we humbly ask you to renew in all Filipinos the spirit of compassion and desire to help others. Let us pray to the Lord. In gratitude, we call on you, Lord. God, our Father, we thank you for our lives and the new life you have given us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the all of his nature. To you, Lord, we gladly offer these gifts from the little we have, humbly imploring your kindness that they may be for us the first fruits of your life-giving generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving, our gratitude is itself your gift. Our prayer, our prayers add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Let us open the heart, our hearts to Jesus and invite Jesus to take over our life and also our country. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Luis Antonio our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, O oh Lord, your servants who have died. From this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in death may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us also, Lord, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, the blessed apostles and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him. O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
midst of tragedies, we can still be grateful. We can be thankful because we still have a God whom we can rely on. We have a Father who cares for us deeply, who will never abandon us. We turn to Him in faith in this moment of need. grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracefully grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. We turn to each other and offer humbly the sign of love and peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. away the sins of the world. Behold him the bread of life who takes away our hunger and pain. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my
Announcements. The Lunch and Learn series will be held tomorrow, 14 November, from 12 noon to 1 p.m. here at the ADB Briefing Theater, room 1810 SFB. The topic is the company of saints growing and living as God's community. The guest speaker will be Father Edwin Mercado of the Archdiocese of Manila, and is currently the Executive Director of Pondo ng Pinoy Community Foundation. The cake, wine, and chocolate raffle will be held on Thursday, 5 December 2013, 5 p.m. at the Briefing Theater. The list of, of the winners will be sent via email immediately after the raffle. Prizes will be distributed on 6 December after the first Friday Mass. We are once more knocking at your generous hearts to please continue praying and extending assistance or relief in any way possible to help the people affected by the recent Typhoon Yolanda. Our small community, Living Life Community, is giving donation through Caritas Manila, <coughs> headed by Cardinal Chito Table the social action arm of the Archdiocese of Manila. We would like to share with you the message from Father Edwin Garigues, Executive Secretary of Caritas Philippines. It's the first time the Philippines has experienced a disaster of this magnitude. The casualties are increasing day by day. There are dead bodies everywhere. People are traumatized. The most urgent needs are for food and water. Despite the impact on the church in Leyte, we are working with the neighboring dioceses, such as in Maasin, to get food in by road. We are, get, we are getting reports from Panay and Beliran that the situation there is very difficult. Houses have been leveled. There are many casualties. They haven't been reached yet. People lack the basic necessities. We really need all the help we can get. Indeed, let us not entertain cynicism and hopelessness. It will only hold back compassion. Be a part of this opportunity by extending donations in cash, responding to our appeal for in-kind donations, and doing volunteer work and help the seminarians, sisters, parishioners, and laypersons repack the items. Interested volunteers may proceed anytime to Caritas Manila at 2002 Jesus Street, Pandacan, Manila. Repacking is done 24 hours. Finally, we would like to thank Father Jason La Guerta from Holy Cross Parish of Makati for celebrating the Mass with us. Let us pray. Having received the bread of heaven from your abundance, O Lord, we pray that may give us such hope and strength for our labor that we may provide effectively for our own needs and for those of our brothers and sisters. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I, I uh, would like to repeat the announcement just to emphasize the importance of Lunch and Learn tomorrow. No? Uh, your speaker, Father Edwin Mercado, is our, uh, at least in the Archdiocese of Manila, he is one of our leading theologians. No? His topic is the company of saints growing and living as God's community. It would be good to uh, hear him because he has so much to offer and he uh, he was my mentor in the seminary and I could tell you that uh, he can draw so much insight from his talk tomorrow. So please come here at uh, 12 o'clock uh, with a lunch and learn uh, talk of Father Edwin Mercado. And as well as for those who wish to help in, the, in our mobilization, 
I think uh, personally for me, because we have been mobilizing also for those who are in need, it would be good to give more in cash, no? Kasi uh, mas alam nung mga anam doon yung kung ano ang... Kasi pag nagdala po kayo ng mga uh, trahe de boda ninyo, baka hindi rin po nila magamit, no? So, uh, for us to be more practical in our helping, maybe it would be good to give, to give more in cash rather than in kind. But if you wish, you can also give in kind. The Lord be with you. And, and may our loving God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Go in peace. Learn always to be grateful. Thanks be to God.